Hey, how's it going? Those are some fancy boots. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> and that's a fancy piece of wood. We have a pistol grown into a tree. We have a pistol grown into a tree. OK. <laughs> I found this piece at an Old West collectibles auction. I think it's worth more than money to someone that wants it, because you can sit around and talk about it and wonder what it's about. I'm going to ask eighteen dollars or $20,000 for it. Um, I'm guessing 1858 Remington? If you're in the Civil War, this was a great thing to have. These things weren't issued to you. You had to go get one. You were issued a muzzle-loading rifle. OK? You know, you got one shot and it's done. I mean, if you, you were carrying around two of these, you got 12 shots. You could shoot all day with this thing. A lot of guys had them in the Civil War, because if you carried one of these with you, there's a lot better chance you'd live. Is it loaded? Supposedly, there is a bullet in the chamber. I honestly don't know. Let me hold on one second here. Let me find a piece of bob wire. That one's empty. That one's empty. Can I take it out of this? You know, I've never taken it out. I... <laughs> Ooh, that's neat how it grew right into the barrel. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's loaded. The one in the chamber, you're never going to be able to figure out. Every once in a while, people bring in buried or sunken treasure. But a gun that a tree actually grew into, I don't even know where to begin. I've definitely never seen anything like this. So this is um, a hell of a quandary. <laughs> um, what in the world is it worth? I want $18,000. I don't think it's worth that much, but I have a friend who I really want to show this to. I want to get his opinion on what it's worth. Hang out a few minutes. I'm going to get him down here. I want him to look at this, OK? Yep, perfect. This thing is just way too cool to let it walk out the door without finding something more about it, even if I just take it home and put it on my bookshelf. I'll make an offer. Here we go. OK, I'm ready. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's actually loaded. Man, I'm just, this is crazy. How did this get here? Nobody's going to ever know, right? No, no one's going to know. Well, there's a piece of oh. iron sticking out the end over here. Oh, wait, wait a minute. It wants to come out. That's weird. I just would love to, it sounds like it's in the barrel. So maybe the guy was cleaning his gun when this all happened? <sighs> there's just a million things with this. We have no idea what's going on. Not that it really matters, but do you know what this gun is? Well, I believe it's a Remington. It is. This is a Remington New Model Army. Uh, they made them roughly from 1862 to 1875. This is a gun that competed with Colt. And in fact, if it wasn't for the Colt fire that destroyed the factory, this gun probably wouldn't have been produced in as great a quantity as it was. Uh, Colt was out of business for a little while, and Remington stepped up to the plate, and this became uh, the most popular pistol for the Union during the Civil War. Really, really interesting. If there was a mint condition, Remington New Model Army here, or this, what would you rather have? I mean, this this one's cool. Oh, I this take this story. Anyway. Oh, yeah. I mean, and that's the whole thing. I can't figure out a price on this thing. And I'm going to tell you something. This is the one time when you're going to ask me what it's worth that I'm going to tell you I don't know. There's nothing else like it. It's one of a kind. OK, so you're not buying a Remington here. You're buying the chance to talk about this guy. It's just. I don't it's know. I'll tell you what I'd pay period. for it. I mean, that's all I can say. I'd tell you what I would pay for it. I'd pay three or $4,000, no problem. No problem. OK. I guess it's a starting point. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Rick. Rick, thanks. OK, I knew you would love to see oh, it. Oh, I love it. Thanks for calling me down. And man, you showed me something I've never seen before, so. Thank you. That's awesome. Much. Thank you. This gun transcends the whole gun thing. It's gun-based, if you will, but this is more of a conversational artifact. Remington mm -hmm. made. 100 and some odd thousand new model armies. This is the coolest one on the planet. OK, so um, this is one of those few things that I would buy off a customer that I would not put it in my showcase. I'd bring it home. Because I really want this for myself. Um, I think this is the greatest thing in the world to pull out at a cocktail party with your friends and talk about it. Uh, 
I'd give you four thousand dollars for it. <laughs> no, I'm gonna pour myself an adult beverage and sit around and uh, tell stories about it and listen to other people okay. still tell stories. It's one of the neatest oddities I've ever seen. Uh, if you change your mind, I, I don't know why it's so. I know it's. We take five. No. Five grand cash for a gun that's basically ruined. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Um, I mean, what would you take? Fifteen. <sighs> um, it's really cool to talk about for five grand, not for fifteen. Thanks for bringing it in. Man. Really, this Thank is you. You really got a treasure there. Thank you. If you change your mind, bring it straight back to me. Okay. Thank you. I hate having a cool piece like this walk out the door. But sometimes the cool factor and the asking price just don't match up. For now, I can just hope he changes his mind and runs back to the shop. How can I help you? I have a Mastodon tusk I want to sell today. OK. Where did you get a Mastodon tusk? About 40 years ago, my great grandfather was on a dig in Florida, and he found it. He was an archaeologist. OK. Um... I gotta say, this is a first. I've never actually seen anything like this. I came to the pawn shop today to try to sell what I think is a Mastodon tusk. It looks very ancient to me. I just think it's worth something. I'm gonna try to get 800 today. I really don't have any use for it, and I'd really like just to get the money. Well, it looks like a tusk. It looks really damn old, I'll tell you that. I mean, if it was found in North America, it could be a Mastodon tusk or a woolly mammoth. Um, I think the Mastodon tusks were a little bit shorter. Okay. They were in North America for millions of years. And a lot of people thought that they got extinct because of the Ice Age, but they went through hundreds of Ice Ages. They most likely got extinct from when man finally came to the North American continent, you know, like 10,000, 12,000 years ago. They hit gold when they saw woolly mammoths. Really huge, slow-moving animal that was easy to hunt and that could feed everybody in a tribe instantly. Pretty soon, they were all gone. Mastodons and woolly mammoths were like really big elephants and easy to hunt. Not only did they supply a ton of food, but the bones, tusks, and fur could be used for tools, clothing, and all kinds of stuff. So once humans discovered them, they went extinct really quick. Normal ivory doesn't look like this. This looks really, really old. I've never seen these lines going like this way in ivory. Maybe 10,000 years old. It's, it's not millions of years old. I don't think it's that old. Um, can I call somebody to check this out? No, I really don't have time. I need to get to work, man. I just need to get this done. All right. How much you looking to get out of it? I'd like to get 800. I mean, my problem is I don't know exactly what I'm buying. For all I know, this could be like a really short elephant tusk that's been in a fire. It gives me the vibe of being really old, but I don't know. Can we take 400 bucks for it? I mean, uh, the, 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 my problem is I'm, I'm taking a big risk. I don't even know what it is. I don't know how rare they are. Let's, let's just get this done at 550. I'll give you 500 bucks because I don't know what I'm buying. So, no way I can get 550 for this. If I knew what I was buying, maybe, but no. 500 is really it. 500 is good. All right, let's go up front. We got to do some paperwork. All right, thanks. I had to take a risk on this thing or lose it. It looked really old to me. Hopefully, it'll be worth a lot more than I paid. Hey, Rick. Hey, Thomas, how's it going? Going good, how have you been? Good. Well, what have you got here? You tell me. The guys call me down normally when they have something that is unusual that's been found in the ground. I bought this off a guy. Uh, he said it was a mastodon tusk. I mean, this weird type of grain I really never seen in ivory before. Well, it's definitely authentic fossil ivory. OK. My estimation is this is probably anywhere from 1,000 to 10,000 years old. OK. So you know this is not modern. It definitely has age. So you've got a very nice specimen here. But it's not an elephant relative at all. OK, what is it? It's a saber-toothed tiger. <laughs> <laughs> walrus? It's a fossil walrus tusk. It's the left tusk. OK. You can see by the curvature and how it curves down toward the center. The other tusk would have come this direction. OK. Yep. And that's what you're seeing along here. This is typical of what walrus ivory would have versus elephant ivory or any sort of elephant relative, such as mastodon or mammoth. 
So how much did you pay for it? I paid 500 bucks for it. In this instance, I think you've done all right. The good news is fossil walrus ivory is sold for carving. This has a very large market, and because of the uh, interest in carvable ivory that's legal, the value on, on this ivory has gone up to over four to $500 a pound now. Okay. So uh, this feels like it's in there anywhere from three to four pounds, so. You know, this is this is going to be twelve to fifteen hundred dollar piece. All right, heck, I did good. You know, well, I've been prepared for all my guesswork. Well, thanks, man. You're the best. You're more than welcome. That was close to being a bust, but my hunch was right. This thing is old, and at least now I know exactly what animal it came from. I should be able to make some good money on it. What do we have here? I've got an exploding die pack from the uh, bank. One thousand dollars of ten dollar bills. If you robbed a bank, why would you take tens? <laughs> I came to the pawn shop today to sell my exploding die pack of $10 bills. I would like to get $500 for it, but I would take $473 because three just ends with a smile. <laughs> and how did you get this? A buddy of mine's in banking. Bank robbing? No, okay. he's just, he just runs the bank. Why wasn't this ever shipped back to the Federal Reserve? I don't know. A few holes in your story, man. I hope you know a good lawyer. <laughs> The way they work is once they walk out the building, there's a little set-off strip right at the door. Okay. After they go out, they're supposed to go off in 10 seconds. It's exploding die pack. It gets all over their clothes, all over their hands, all over the other money, and it's rendered useless. They can't use it anymore. I imagine the only people who really ever see these things is maybe a cashier, a few people at a bank, someone who works at the Federal Reserve, and bank robbers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're real rare. Die packs are used in most U.S. banks nowadays because it's pretty hard to claim you're innocent when you're covered head to toe and die. <laughs> I think there's a few different types of devices they use. They actually make a pack now with a transmitter in it, so even if you get a few blocks from the bank, they can just keep on following you all over town until they get to your house. Now that, I didn't know that. I guess they're actual $10 bills they cut apart. It wouldn't surprise me if for some reason or the other, this is owned by the Federal Reserve. I'm assuming it's legal to buy this die pack. But then again, when you're dealing with the feds, you better be certain. How much you want for it? I'd like 500. I have never seen one of these things before. I am sure there are some rules and regulations, if not laws on it. So do you mind if I call somebody in, have them come check it out? I think that's fair. OK. Well, I'm hoping whoever comes in to look at it says it's a real rare item that is legal to own and it's worth a lot of money. Mark. How you doing? The guys normally call me down here when they've got something that's a little odd or they want some more information on. So what do we got? We have the die pack thing you get in the bank when you rob it. Well, these things were developed back in the 1990s. If you were being robbed, you were supposed to slip it in with all the other bills. It would blow out this ink that dyed your skin. It dyed the bills. It dyed everything. When that thing goes off, you're either blue or red or whatever color, and so is all the money. So what is your concern with this? Are they legal to own? Um, yeah, you're fine with them. <laughs> In this case, these were actually not made by the Federal Reserve. They were made by a private company. And the private company would cut out enough of the bill so that you have less than 20% left. They're basically just trash paper at this point. What you have here is a curiosity. I understand. Thanks, man. Good to see you. Now that I know it's legal for me to buy, I'm interested. Curiosities like this create buzz, and they get people in my shop. How much do you want for them? You know, the number that pops into my head is 473. Were you dreaming when you came up with that number? No, I just think it sounds good. Just when you end it in a three, 473, you end it with a smile. I'm not smiling. I, it's, it's a tough sell item. It, it really is, and it's going to take a while. I will give you 100 bucks for it. I mean, the problem is it's just a curiosity. How about 300 bucks? I'll give you 150 bucks. Uh, if you market it right, I think you get quite a bit more money for $200. I'll tell you what, I'll go 175. I won't go a penny more. I mean, that's, I feel as if I'm giving you a fair price for it. OK. All right, write them up, chump. I was shocked that I didn't get more than $175. I thought I was a better negotiator. Hey, how's it going? Good, how you doing? 
Okay, we have some Pinocchios. I have three of them, originally made by Bob Baker marionettes for the Disney company. That's really cool. Be honest with me, have you ever sat around at night and played with them or anything? No. <laughs> I came to the pawn shop today to sell my Pinocchio marionettes. I'd like to sell them today because they're taking up closet space. The least amount of money I'm willing to take for them is five grand, because that's what I got into them. I can honestly tell you I've never had a giant Pinocchio marionette brought in my store ever. OK. And there's one thing in this world that's collectible. It's Disney stuff. These are just, like, perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're all handcrafted. Yeah. Um, Pinocchio is one of Disney's most iconic figures. Pinocchio wanted to be a real boy, not made out of wood. And one of the things about it was, if he ever lied, his nose grew. Um, Disney didn't come up with a story. It's a much older story that was adapted for the film. Walt Disney released his first full-length animated movie back in 1937. He was the first one to realize animated films could make tons of money. And you could convert the characters into merchandise and make a lot more. <laughs> How do they work? Well, let me show you here real quick. Most of these have been sitting in the boxes in my closet. Of course, there you do your little walk and your hand thing. I don't know, I'm not a puppeteer. It looks like a rap star or something walking around with his pants sagging. This is the best I can do with it. You sure these are yours, dude? Because you have no idea how to use that tool. Uh, they're mine. <laughs> Disney is one of the most collectible brands in the world, and collectors are extremely passionate about it. So I know there's plenty of potential buyers for these. What I don't know is how much they're actually worth. So what did you want to do with these things? Well, I want to sell them. OK, how much did you want for them? Well, corresponding with email through Bob Baker Marionettes, they're saying that these things are worth 10000 to 100000 Wow, that's a spread, I would say. You know what? These things might be worth a lot of money. You know, I don't know if these things pop up once every five years or once a month. So I got a buddy who knows all about these things. You mind if I call him up and get him down here to take a look at them? No, that's fine. All right, let me give him a call. All right, sir. I'm excited they have an expert coming in, because I think he'll know the true value of these things, because they are very collectible. What do you think? You really get some different stuff here, man. I own Toy Shack right here in downtown Las Vegas. I took up toys as a hobby as a young kid and, and been doing it my whole life. Basically, what we have here is some life-size Pinocchio marionettes. Bob Baker was commissioned to make these pieces. Who exactly was Bob Baker? He's the go-to guy, basically, for puppets. He's created over 3,000 puppets, I believe. Whoa, that is neat. This is an exact replica of what the animators would have used back in the late 30s to animate for the movie. So that there would have been a puppeteer moving around Pinocchio, and then the artist would have been around drawing it, so that way they would have been all on the same page. These aren't the puppets they would have used in the late 30s, but these are an exact replica of what the animators would have seen or used to create the movie of Pinocchio. So what are your concerns, Rick, about the pieces? Um, basically what they're worth, and um, have you seen a lot of them? They pop up a lot? Very, very rarely. I mean, you see the smaller pieces, but you don't see the life-size Pinocchios. These are some really neat pieces. OK, so everything about them is legit. These came out of the Bob Baker studio. Do you have some paperwork, too? For one of them, number 55, yeah. OK. Well, it's 100% that these are licensed pieces. I would put a value on each piece. About 6,000 a piece. There we go. Wow, that's a lot of money. All right, thanks, man. You're the best. No problem. Appreciate it, Jimmy. All right, so how much do you want for them? Why don't we start at 18? No. If you had your own store, you could maybe get 6000 a piece for them after a while. Do you got a realistic number? Uh, you know, 14000 There's no way. Your average working person doesn't spend this kind of money for something that looks cute in the corner of a room. It's going to take a while to sell them. I'll give you nine grand for them. These are unique. You would only come across these originals ever so often. Would you do 10? <laughs> What do you think? 9,000 sounds a lot better than 10. How about 95? That's cash. I think we got a deal. All right, deal. You want to write them up? Yeah, come with me, man. I feel good about 9,500. I got some money in my pocket now, and I'm very happy to get rid of these things.